Hi, thanks for watching the video. I'm Todd Baginski. I'm a Microsoft MVP and partner and CTO at Canvas. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your first Power Apps Component Framework component. Let's get going. The first thing you're going to want to do is to come to this web page you see right here. To get to this web page, go to the URL aka.ms slash pcfdocs. That'll take you right to this page. This page will tell you everything you need to know to get started that I'm going to show you inside of this video. One of the first things that you'll need to do is install the different prerequisites by coming to this page here. You can see what the prerequisites are. You have to get NPM installed or Node.js. They, they both basically will install each other. To do that, go to nodejs.org and download the LTS version and install it. After you've done that, download Visual Studio 27 or Visual Studio Code by going to this page and downloading it on whatever uh, you want to work with after you've generated the PCF project. After that, you'll need to actually download the Power Apps CLI. And to do that, you can click the download link that's on the web page I showed you how to get to. Now, after you download that, you're going to get this MSI file right here. And so I'm going to double click it to run it and show you what it looks like when you install it. It's very simple. First, accept the license agreement and click install. Once that's done, just click finish and now you have everything installed and you're ready to go ahead and create your first PCF component. Before I actually create my first PCF component, I'm going to show you something about how I like to organize my files. Perhaps this would work well for you too. The first thing that I do is create a directory on my file system named PCF. You can see this one's hanging right off the root of my D drive. The next thing that I do is I create a directory called controls and I create another one called solutions. Each PCF control that you create will go inside of a folder that you create in this controls folder. And then each solution you use to package these controls will be put in this solutions folder. As you can see, I have them both blank right now. I chose to do it this way so I can better manage my source uh, control and keep my code organized so I can make multiple controls and package them into many different solutions. So let's go ahead now and make our first control. First thing I'm going to do is go into the controls directory and we can see that is empty. Then I'm going to open up a command prompt here and change to that same directory. As I mentioned before, I like to make a directory for every single one of the controls I use. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to execute this command to make that new directory and there we can see it show up in the file explorer and now I will change into that directory. Now I'm going to use the Power Apps CLI to generate my new PCF control project. This is the command I use to do it. You can see it is PC, PAC, PCF init, and then pass in the namespace parameter. In this case, I'm calling it Canvas PCF. I give my control a name. In this case, it's PCF demo control. And then I pick the template of the type of project that I'd like to create. In this case, I chose the field type. You'll notice when I ran that command, it created a new folder here under my directory, as well as a bunch of other files that are going to allow me to actually uh, develop and build that control. Next thing I'm going to do is I am going to now run a couple commands here and the first one is npm install so I'm gonna kick that off so it goes and retrieves all the dependencies from npm and while that's happening I'm gonna open up this folder inside of Visual Studio Code and show you what was generated here by that CLI here you can see the project structure that we have inside and here's my demo control 
This is the manifest file. This is a very important file which defines the metadata about your control, any properties that you're using to pass data inside and out of them. If you use type groups, you can specify the data type of those properties. You can also include the various resources you wish to load down here as well. If you look at the index.ts file, here you will see all the different methods that you will actually add code to to implement your control. You can see they're all blank from now. So really, this control doesn't do anything at this point except define a property called sample property and render basically nothing to the screen. And, and that's okay for right now because we're just getting through this hello world example of what we can do here. Now as I come back to the command window, we can see npm install is finished. So the next thing I actually need to do to test it and to debug it is to run another command. And this one is npm run build. When I do npm run build, it's going to go and it's going to package that whole thing up for me. And now I can run npm start and I can actually start up a little local harness in my web browser so that I can view this control just as it would appear inside of Power Apps. So if I come back to my web browser here and I paste in that address, the control is appearing here. There's just nothing inside of the control yet. And over here you can see that this is where I can put values in for my property. And right now, obviously, the control has not been plumbed to take advantage of any of these values and react to them and display them. So I'm going to make a couple modifications now and then come back to this and show you how it works. Okay, so now I made some modifications to the code. All I did was modify the code so that when a user types in the value to the property in that test harness on the right side, we will actually see the value displayed inside of the control. So to do that, first, I created this private variable called value of type string. Then I created the component framework context object with this line of code here. I need this object because it allows me to get a hold of the parameter value uh, or the property value that's set there. The next thing that I do is create an HTML div called container. This is going to be the div that I put in all of the things that this control displays. After I've done that, I come down to the init method. In the init method, I set the context equal to the current context. I create a new element for the div and assign it to that HTML div that I created above. And then this is how I actually get a hold of the sample uh, property value. Remember, we saw that, that property defined here by default over in the manifest file. This is sample property. So to access that programmatically at runtime, this is the code I use to do that. Once I've got that value back right there, then I'm just going to set it to the inner text of that container div that I created. This line of code does that. Finally, I'm going to append the container to the other one that already comes with the control, and that will allow me to render all that. Then I made these little updates here inside of update view. This is the code that's actually going to fire every time that these context changes. So here in init, I set the initial value of what the property is set to. But if the user changes the property, I want this code to fire. And as you can see, if you look at this code, it's very similar, if not exact, to what I'm doing up here. So it just takes the value of the property that I type in in the test harness, or that gets set at runtime inside of a power app, and automatically displays it. So after I've done that, I run the same commands that I ran before to build and start the project. And now when I come back and I refresh my page, you'll notice everything looks the same until I start entering values here. So here you go, who day, go Bengals. I can add that value and now we see it change in real time. 
as I change values here, it also changes inside of the control. And you can see it happens in real time because I populated that update view method with the code. So this is the quickest way that you can create yourself a Power Apps Control Framework component. I'm going to have follow-up videos in just a day or two that take it deeper and show you how you can do even more with these components. And those will include how to deploy it and use it inside of a model-driven app and how to package it into a solution. Uh, I'm going to get back into showing you why this file structure that I created under PCF here contains the solutions directory where we'll make our solutions and package these controls into them. Now, one last thing I'd like to point out about getting started with these. A great place to learn and look at code is actually the samples that Microsoft gives us. So if we come back to the PCF documentation and we go to this sample components section, pick any component you want, then go down to the very bottom of the documentation about that particular component. As soon as this one lights up, I'll attempt to do that. There we go. So we've got this one shows you how to implement the increment component. And you can see all these different components Microsoft gives us to play with here. They tell you about all the different code inside. It's very well commented, can really help your reverse engineer to learn this technology. When you get to the very bottom of all these, there's this download sample components link right here. And when you click that link, you download this sample PCF controls.zip file. So I'm going to open that one up now to show you what it looks like. And you can see there are many different controls in here. So you can take these and put them into your controls folder that you've created. And then you can then open up any one of these controls you want in Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio 2017 and go ahead and you know, run these controls with the NPM install, NPM run build, NPM start, and actually see them work. A couple of them you'll have to do some configurations like the map control. You'll need a Bing map key to make that one work. Uh, most of them are pretty straightforward and great learning exercises, so I encourage you to check them out. So that's it for this video today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Hope you have a great day.